We got JBL clones. We got Marshall clones. <laughs> now we got House of Marley clones. This is the DOS Soundbox H200. It's one of the new speakers. Um, it's very, very like a House of Marley speaker, except the tweeters in the inside, not the outside. You know what? This is what I'm going to say. I think it's the same company that makes the House of Marley stuff and the DOS stuff. That's what I'm thinking, because they all are from China. And I think they're sourcing it directly from the same company. It's really interesting, because um, I don't know if this is going to be a new era, but... <laughs> I hope it's not, but I kind of hope it is going to be a new era of, of Bluetooth speaker clones. It's just interesting looking at these things. <laughs> it's goofy. Anyway, this is the Soundbox A200. It's a two-way stereo configuration, about the size of the Anchor Motion Boom Plus. Um, so yeah, it's actually a JBL Extreme contender. Uh, I'm sorry, a JBL Boombox contender. Um, you're looking at hundred something dollars. I got it for a hundred. Um, if it's not on discount, you probably get it for hundred twenty. So, not the most expensive uh, boombox sized speaker. You got two three and a half inch woofers, two, I think it's a 0.75 inch tweeter, and then one single passive radiator back here. This oval passive radiator. And um, another interesting thing I've noticed about this is that you get a coaxial input. Not, I haven't seen any Bluetooth speaker that has that. Anyways, uh, let's compare it to the Anchor. Volume at about 50% for the Soundbox X200, about one third for the Anchor Soundcore. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to crank both of them to the max volume. We're going to start with the DOS. Loudness wise, I would say, interestingly, they're comparable. I expect the DOS to be a lot lot quieter because um, when it's playing at half volume, the anchor is only playing at one third. So I guess it's the difference in volume stepping. Uh, the DSP is tuned differently, but loudness wise, quite comparable. I think the anchor does get a little bit a little bit louder at max volume, but the DOS retains a bit more bass. So it's a give and take. Let's talk about the sound in general. Um, I feel like the Anchor has just way more bass or way more boosted bass as compared to the DOS. It also plays a little bit deeper. It plays down to the 40 hertz region, whereas the DOS will start rolling off at, um, I'd say, a good 65 to 70 hertz. Um, the DOS could barely play down to 50 hertz. I'll show you that once we uh, pull out the frequency measurement graph. It rolls off pretty quickly. So for a speaker this size, 
Um, it's to be expected because you can see this is quite um, quite shallow. I would hope they can make it a little more deeper. Anyways, um, let's do a quick base test and then we'll do a teardown and a frequency measurement analysis. <laughs> There you have it, gangster rap time. I like how the uh, speaker drivers is exposed. Um, let's take this thing apart. We're gonna see what's inside. Uh, this is actually real wood, by the way. But let me tell you a, 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 a sad truth. The enclosure is still plastic. You'll see. All right, so we got our uh, amplifier board here. Um, it's got an interesting heatsink on there. It is unfortunately not a bi-amped system. It is still a stereo amplifier, just like a lot of other speakers I've tested. Oh my God. Why can't they just put a bi -amp system in system in there? Well, I'll tell you what, this is a hundred something dollars maybe they didn't they don't have the budget but still damn what a shame um yeah i don't know how many watts the amp is because i can't take the heat sink off it's glued shut if i pull it off forcefully it would literally like rip the entire ic off i don't want that i just don't want this thing to work and there is probably it's a like i said it's a three chip configuration so there is some battery uh some power management chip for charging a battery and there's probably also some sort of a conversion or, or Digital audio, uh, digital to analog or analog to digital, I don't know, some sort of a converter for the coaxial. Like I said, I don't really know what that is for. Never seen it on a Bluetooth speaker. And it certainly doesn't look like the coaxial that I've known, the ones you see on the oscilloscopes. Um, then again, this is, so see here, this is probably a, like a buck converter from USB-C to, to, to convert it to the right voltage to charge the battery and also a um, battery monitor thing that, keeps in track you know how much power uh, how, how much uh, charge there is left in the battery and then right here you also got oh the light you can't see it ats 2853 this is your all-in-one bluetooth chip it's got dsp bluetooth and all that junk built together so like i said very typical hua chang bay configuration now remember there is a woofer and a tweeter right the crossover is a simple simple 4.7 microfarad capacitor yeah nothing too fancy right here uh, yeah, I almost forgot this top part. This is where the uh, rotary encoder is at. It's got this little clicky switch. You know what? Save the money for a goddamn rotary encoder. Just use buttons and then use that money and make an active crossover for the speakers. Uh, here is your boards. There's nothing too fancy there. I'm not going to take these like eight screws. I'm going to remove them all. But you know, this is a rotary encoder. It's a couple of buttons and LEDs. Down here we have our big oval passive radiator. It's quite stiff really but um yeah it does get the job done but it doesn't really provide any much base to it like i said this rolls off pretty quickly to speak i tried to get the tweeter out but it's glued shut in there it's just a small dome tweeter nothing too special all right this is the front panel three and a half inch woofers these are the uh dome tweeters and this is 18650 actually no i don't think these are 18650 yeah, I was wrong. These are not 18650s. These are 21700s. So, uh, two of these 21700s, you get approximately three to four 18650s, um, you know, worth of capacity, but it's still uh, 7.4 volts. So, yeah, it was actually, this is actually a bigger battery than what I expect. I thought it was just two 18650s. Big shout out to uh, Anchor. Or, I'm sorry, not Anchor. What am I saying today? I can't talk properly. Uh, DOS. See, there's so many of these Hua Chang Bay brands that just really confuses me. What is what? The only two that I could definitely make out is Tribit and uh, Earfun. Those are the two uh, great pillars of Hua Chang bay -ness. <laughs> Not the other stuff. I'll pull one of these drivers out and show you what's uh, behind. 
All right, this is your three and a half inch driver. Very interesting. Four ohms. And uh, that's a beefy magnet. There's no venting, but uh, so that's a decent sized driver. I like this. This is good. Big shout out to DOS. That's some quality stuff right there. All right, anyways, to uh, sum it all up, we're going to take a look at the three categories of a good watch on bass speaker, what a good watch on bass speaker should have. Number one, sound. So sound-wise, the speaker is actually pretty decent. Let's take a look at the frequency measurement. I'll show you why. All right, so if you're looking at the frequency response, you would see that, wow, all the way up to three kilohertz, the speaker is exceptionally flat. Um, that means these... Are really good woofers. This is this is why I said I actually think the speaker is decent. This is very very flat. It's um, I haven't done any octave smoothing or anything, but you could say that it's this is actually really really good for a speaker um, that's Bluetooth and all cheap. But you know it kind of gets messy once we uh, go to the higher frequencies. You got all these kind of messiness and dips and whatnot especially between three to six kilohertz and then the treble is also kind of kind of recessed so um the roll off don't mind it it's bluetooth it rolls off pretty early all bluetooth speakers like that uh but like i said well the treble is kind of a mess it means the tweeters are junk and um i think also the, the weird placement does to that too anyways another thing you look at is the bass it starts rolling off at 78 hertz somewhere over here almost close to 80 hertz terrible that's literally no bass and you don't get anything below 60 so very unfortunate that i i just don't think that in terms of you know full ranges maybe say a, a good five to ten years back if this is going to be a decent speaker actually it's going to be very good but uh, not anymore because it's 2024 bluetooth speakers of this size should be able to go down to at least 50 hertz but no nothing here so unfortunately yeah i can't really recommend it as you know a very good sounding speaker. I could only say that it's mediocre. Now let's talk engineering. If we completely disregard the, disregard the poor sound engineering, meaning putting a three and a half inch, two three and a half inch woofers actually in a tiny enclosure like that, um, let's just talk about the engineering of you know so the placement of everything and and all that stuff. I'm gonna show you this real quick. So there's eight extra screws in the front plate to remove so you remove that front wooden plate. In order to get to these um, 21700 batteries. Not only that. I don't know if you can see it. But see here. It's glued. So you have to. Good luck removing that glue too. And if you glue back, back once you replace the battery. So yeah. Poor engineering right there. I don't like what I'm seeing. And the fact that the uh, wooden panels. The one at the back and the one. Uh, the one at the back is glued shut. And it's recessed. It's basically flush mount to the, uh, the enclosure itself. It's uh inside here you see you have to get in and then pry it open you're going to destroy the wood like that if you you know aren't as careful or anything it, something's going to happen to the wood and it's going to look ugly so yeah this speaker it's just a slight i could still put it back together without you know with only slight traces of it's been uh, taken apart before but it's still it's i mean it's still better than the anchor boom too but still this isn't really anywhere close to quote unquote repairable in my opinion and the fact that they don't have a active crossover is another minus in the engineering. So I really couldn't give it a very high score in terms of, you know, how well engineered the speaker is. It really just isn't that well engineered. Uh, third, third part, we're going to talk about the build quality where we look at the components and everything. This is actually the only part that DOS did something right. Uh, the build quality is decent. This is actually, oh shit, this is actually a metal knob. Good job, DOS. I like seeing that. These circuit boards are of very good quality these are almost like i said it's very close to those of an anchor speaker or jbl or something like that uh, but not quite it's just, but it's very close and not to mention we got this driver look at that that's very good stuff so yeah um that's about it all in all what i recommend the speaker yes if you're not a bass head if you're a bass head look some look for something else